Joining me now is the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, who was behind this scheme, very much a supporter of it. Obviously, this is your baby, but there has been huge opposition to the expansion of this scheme from many groups, many residents, many businesses. Why do you believe you're on the right side of history over this? Look, the decision to expand the ULO so it covers all of London was a difficult decision, but I think it's a vital one and the right one. Now, let me explain why. The evidence is quite clear in relation to the consequences of air pollution. It does lead to, in London, around 4,000 premature deaths a year. It leads to children having stunted lungs forever. Adults with a whole host of health issues from asthma to cancer, dementia to heart disease. We also know the evidence is there is an effective policy that reduces air pollution. How do we know this? Because we have the units in central London and it's managed to reduce the pollutants, the toxicity by almost 50%. A third fewer children admitted to hospital with air pollution problems because of the ULAs in central London. We expanded it to inner London and we saw a further 21% reduction in air pollution. But also we've seen 1,400 schools with children breathing clean air. But here's the real problem. In outer London, we've not seen any significant improvement. The 10 boroughs, with the largest number of premature deaths are all in outer London. The 30 GP practices, uh, 24 of the 30 which have the worst patients with respiratory issues are all in outer London. In our great city, around 500,000 people have respiratory issues. Two thirds live in outer uh, London. But I have been listening to the concerns, as you said, people have, which is why without a penny of support from the government, we've got the biggest scrappy scheme our country's ever seen. So anybody in London, uh, and it's a small minority who may have a non-compliant vehicle can receive support. We'll talk about the scrappage scheme in a moment, but on the science, there are others who, who've pointed to the science and say it doesn't reduce air pollution by th this much. The LSE research shows widespread but relatively small reductions and even some increases in air pollution. Uh, overall, the, the authors of the LSE report found that an average reduction of less than 3% in nitrogen dioxide levels and insignificant changes in something called PM2.5 concentrations. I mean, so it, it isn't conclusive, no. is it? I think you may be referring to the Engineering Department for Imperial, their report, not LSE. Uh, so let me quite close. You've got the Engineering Department for LSE who did a report over between five to eight weeks. Uh, on the other side, you've got the Air Quality Department of Imperial College, King's College, Queen Mary's University, LSE, uh, the World Health Organization, the Chief Medical Officer, uh, experts at Great Ormond Street, experts at the Children's Evelina Hospital, GP practices around our city showing the benefits of uh, ULIS and the disbenefits of uh, air pollution. You've seen a... But, but the fact is that some scientists are saying that, that what you are saying of the, of the benefits is not as much as you are saying it is. You're talking about one scientist, I am. one PhD student yeah. at Imperial College, and I'm giving you a... Comparing that to all the other scientists who say the alternative... How do we explain a third fewer children being admitted to hospital with air pollution-related illnesses? How do we explain the fact that the vast, vast, vast majority of scientists see, have seen an almost 50% reduction in uh, uh, air pollution in central London, a further 20% reduction of air pollution in uh, inner uh, London? The science is quite clear, actually, in relation to the consequences of air pollution and in relation to the effectiveness of uh, ULES, but also the science shows that the 10 boroughs with the largest number of premature deaths are guess where? In outer London. When you look at the 30 GP practices with the largest number of patients who've got these sorts of problems, 24 of the 30 are guess where? In outer London. Look at those with illnesses in London linked with uh, air pollution. More than two thirds live in guess where? Outer London. They've not seen the benefits of uh, ULES. After today, they will. So the scrappage scheme that you mentioned, uh, the figures are again sl slightly different. The RAC says they reckon around 700,000 vehicles, you reckon around 210,000 vehicles uh, are not going to be compliant. How can all these drivers be expected to pay this extra charge in a cost of living crisis? Yes, yeah, so, so, so in London around half of our households don't own a car. The poorest Londoners, the figure is more than 70%, don't own a car. But the further Actually, out you get, no, sure, I'll, I'll come the to more do. Sure, sure, sure. But it's those least likely to own a car suffer the worst consequences of uh, air pollution. So it's an issue of social justice to clean up the air in our great city. But I recognise that there are some Londoners who need their car and they may have a non-compliant vehicle. The good news, in inner London, the number of cars that are compliant seen driving on an average day around 97%. But you're right, in outer London, there are fewer 
uh, non, uh, there, there are fewer um, non-compliant vehicles. It's around nine out of 10. 90% of cars seen driving on an average day in outer London are already compliant. So they'll get the benefits of clean air without paying a penny more. But I recognise there are some Londoners who may be affected. That's why, without a penny of support from the government, and the government, and they, they deserve credit for this, are giving support to cities around the country with a cleaner zone, have not given us any support. What I announced in January was a scrappy scheme of £110 million targeted towards low-income families, those who are disabled, micro-businesses who employ less than 10 people, and charities. In July, I expanded that. So every family in London who receives child benefit, that's more than 800,000 families receive support in outer London. That's more than 560,000 families. And a few weeks ago, I announced that every single person in London who may have a non-compliant vehicle will receive support. It's still unpopular, though. Are you worried? We saw what happened in Nuxbridge at the by-election there. There are now people saying there's this donut ring of seats around central London and greater London that Labour could really struggle with at the next election. I mean, do you not feel that this is... I totally get that, that you are passionate about this policy and it's really dear to you and it's really important to you, but do you not think that it could really damage the Labour Party overall when it comes to the next election? You, you know, let me be quite clear in relation to uh, this. I'm pragmatic. You know, I'm not evangelical, uh, ignore, ignore the evidence. Because I'm pragmatic, I can see the evidence in relation to the consequences of air pollution, but also what works. But this was a difficult position. I genuinely think it's a vital one, and I think it's the uh, right one. Uh, and actually, I think Londoners want to see clean air in our city. They want to see their leaders taking bold action. What they don't want is politicians for short-term political gain playing politics with public health and the climate emergency. City Khan, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much.